Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. Please invite your friends and bring your beer with you. Uh, for sure if you are over the age. Because, uh, you know, there is a halal beer. Yeah. And there's halal whiskey. And there's halal black label. Bud Light. Budweiser. Hennekin. You know, Islamic cult <coughs> is the most awkward, silly, stupid religion, if we can call it a religion. And today I will show you an example. This is a very well known Abdul for the Mohammedan. Supposedly he's a Abdul, big Abdul, you know. And he want to tell us something very important, you know. And me, myself, I learned my religion from the Abdul. I mean, those are the ones on the TV because they are there to teach you how to be, how to go to heaven. Those are the guys. That, this is the way, I mean, this is the, this is the way to go to heaven. Sorry if my voice is not good. I was singing because I was drinking beer. So let us see. Ali Ibrahim saying there is no there's no Ali Ali okay Ali is saying there's no halal beer well Ali people can go right now and search on Google and they will find there's halal beer you Muslims have halal for everything even there's a store is you know halal sex toys don't make me make a video about it halal sex toys if you don't believe me, I can do a little search and I can show it to you. And this is why I'm saying Islam is the most awkward, funny cult. In the appearance, Islam is something uh, in details is something else. Halal vibration exploring an X-rated Muslim uh, sex shop. <laughs> what makes sex shop halal? <laughs> UK first halal sex shop open online. <laughs> So Ali, you are you know you know you are talking to Christian friends, right? So don't don't go there. I mean those things. No, we don't have this. Don't, those you can say you say them to somebody who have a blue eyes, you know. Somebody do not know Arabic. He don't have the, the, the knowledge of the this this uh, funny stupid religion. You can say no as much as you want, but not with us. We don't have a little beer. We don't have a little beer. Yeah, right. Shake. Tell Ali, our friend here, who is uh, watching us, do you, Muhammadan, have halal beer? Beer. Not all beer is haram. <coughs> brother, not all beer is haram, brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Ah. Ali, are you there? Not all beer <coughs> is haram. <coughs> Today my voice is not good, I don't know why. Maybe I drank too much coffee. Beer. Not all beer is haram. Not all beer. So we have. Are you drinking beer now? What? Not all beer is haram, and he grab a drink. <laughs> okay, tell us about it more. <coughs> beer that is prohibited, and they have beer that is halal. <coughs> <coughs> How do we judge? How do we judge? We do that through the end result. Oh. If we have a beer that is called non-alcoholic and it has 
0.3 or 0.5% alcohol in Look, what the heck? So how it is non-alcoholic and it have 0.3 or 0.5? I mean, guys, did you hear this? This religion make you genius. This drink is non-alcoholic. It have 0.3 or 0.5 alcohol. But you just said it's non-alcoholic. So is it alcoholic or not? As long as you have alcohol, it is alcoholic. And he will explain to you more. Just listen carefully. Things will get more complicated later. Alcoholic. And it has <coughs> 0.3 or 0.5% alcohol in it. Doctors and professionals say that if you consume a six pack, it would not intoxicate you. Brother, six bags. Brother, you take six a drink from this. You take the seven, you're drunk. <laughs> uh, have you taken a COVID vaccine? No, my friend, I am an I am a Middle Eastern. If if COVID come to me, COVID will die. I can show you a video actually. Once a mosquito, she did bite me. She died immediately, brother. What are you talking about? You know, we are Arab. Don't you see? We are the one who come with this genius religion. No COVID can affect us. No mosquito can kill us. Like, come on. What are you talking about? Al-Qazafi is my cousin. Saddam Hussein is my uncle. And you are asking me to take COVID-19 vaccine. What's wrong with you? This guy is crazy. Something wrong with you. You are not thinking perfectly. You know, like we are the Arab. We are the best in the world. Shakespeare is uh, my cousin. His name, his real name is Shakespeare. You know, do you think Shakespeare he need a COVID nineteen vaccine? I'm like, come on! Especially he's dead now, so he will never need it anyway. <laughs> we go back to our topic. So, if you drink six, six bags, it doesn't affect you, really. Point three <clears throat> or point five percent alcohol in it. Doctors and professionals say that if you consume a six pack, it would not intoxicate you. Hence, it is halal. Oof. Because the Prophet gave us the parameters, alayhi salatu salam, of what is halal and what is haram. When he said in an authentic hadith, whatever intoxicates in large quantities, then little of it is haram. So, if someone drinks a glass of champagne and he's not intoxicated, he does not have the right to say, it's halal for me. I'm just a social drinker. They were throwing a toast, so I just drank half a glass. And it did not intoxicate me. I said, Akhi, if you, if you drank or if you were to drink a large quantities of it, like five or six glasses, would you become intoxicated? He said, definitely, I'd become wasted. In this case, a drop of it, one single drop, is haram for you. Look at this stupid, awkward cult. He just said, when he described the halal beer, that doctors, they say, if you drink seven packs of it, you're fine. Correct? And then he compared it to champagne. And he says, if you drink six of it, are you going to get drunk? He said, yes. So the same. So it's about the quantity, you know, of the drink you take will make you drunk at the end. It doesn't matter what, what drink you are drinking. Ali, Ali, we will go to the verse you want me to read. We will go there. And later you will be sorry. If we go to 590, trust me, you will be sorry. Don't push me there, Ali. Trust me, you would die laughing at 590. Like, come on. Ali, why you are, you know, Ali, are you paid by by by, by Christian prince? I mean, if I want to laugh at Muhammad, I will go to chapter 5, verse, verse number 90. 
Why you are doing that, your prophet brother? You know what? I'm going to go and do what Ali he wished for. This is what you get. It's what you wish for. Here we go. Brother. And now don't tell me I don't want to read it. And don't tell me, please don't show it. Okay. And I will show you in a second why you will regret asking me to show you this verse. All you who believe, drunk and gambling, etc., and playing games, etc., those is abom abomination of shaitan. But isn't it this is your prophet? Copying one of our church father saying that in First Corinthians chapter six, verse number ten. Your prophet is a fraud. Even he copy it word by word. Do you see it, Ali? What do you say, Ali? And guess what? You Muslim, you keep attacking Paul and say that Paul was an evil man. When your city Quran is copying Paul, word by word, and actually, Paul is more clear in the verse. He said, those who do those things, they don't go to heaven. Where in the Quran it says, those who do things, they will not go to heaven? Show me. Can you show me? So here actually, because you mentioned this, you expose your God, that your Muslims are not really conservative in your religion. Adultery, you go to heaven. Sex with the children, you go to heaven. Sex with watermelon, you go to heaven. Sex with the child, you go to heaven. Being drunk, you go to heaven. Anything, you go to heaven. But in the first Corinthian, it says it clearly that those who do those things, which means if they don't repent, they're drunken, there's people who live, you know, all day they are drunk. The greedy, the thieves, the abusers, and the, those, all those things go to your prophet, by the way. He was a drunk, he's a thief, you, you, I mean, the, you, the whole rest. So when a Muslim he says to us, show us please chapter 5, verse number 90. Did you prove to us that Islam is from God? Let me show you how we laugh now. According to your God, chapter 5, verse number 91, that Shaitan, he used those things to make you hate each other. Correct? The verse in the front of you. And this is the one you choose for me. But isn't it your God in the Quran? He prays alcohol saying it's wonderful. It's great. It's amazing. Actually, it's a miracle from Allah. So how alcohol is it from shaitan? And then alcohol is a sign from Allah, and it's a good privilege, good good deeds. It's a good uh, uh, provision. Your prophet and his companion, they used to be drunk 24 hours, 7 days a week. We have Mara Bara saying, Christian pagan, 
I don't know who is the pagan here. It is you, my friend, who kiss a black stone which is in the shape of a vagina. Not me. You see here, you notice, by the way, that Muslims always they accuse you of things. In fact, they are the one who does those things. They say that wine is haram, but Allah, he promised you a river of wine in heaven. So if wine is coming from the devil, why Allah is promising me the work of the devil in the heaven? And here, this is another idiot saying a Christian pagan, black stone kisser, a guy who bow down in front of a stone. He kisses stone. And he believed if he touch a stone, it erases his sin. And yet he talk about paganism. You see, the Muslim, they go, they make fun of the Hindus, of the Buddhas, or everybody. They are supremacists. But in fact, there's nobody pagan as they are. All your religion is based on stones. All your religion is based on the stone. We don't worship the cross. And we don't believe that the cross will forgive us. You Muslims... In my, actually, in my belief, there's nothing that's called the cross. Cross is a, a tool of punishment. Just because Jesus, he died there, so we respect what Jesus did to us. We don't respect the, the piece of wood. You must then believe that the black stone, if you touch it, erase your sin. You must then, your prophet told you that the black stone is going to have eyes and tongue, literally, not metaphorically. And we intercede for you in the day of judgment. You must believe that the black stone is the helper between you and Allah, the middle, the middle person. Actually, the same Sheikh we showed you here in other video, if you remember, what was the title of the video? I forgot. <clears throat> uh, I think it was about Mushrikeen. He said that the Mushrikeen believe in the same thing the Muslim believe in. Exactly the same thing. Let me find the video for you. I forgot the name of the video. Um, let us see. Here we go. Let us see if we get it here. Oh, this is my video. I, I searched for it. I found my video. Hold on. So now I need to find where the shaky took. Hold on. Okay, this is my video. I could not find the video of the shake himself directly, but it's my video. It's okay. It will do the job. Let us see. We want to hear the guy talking. All right. This quote unquote renowned scholar. What? You see here, like, uh, you know, like, uh, yeah, I want to just, I want to go where he speak, not where I talk. Bless us with this gift. Okay, hold on. I'll talk for you, my friend. Is that the prophet who says, in the case of murder, free for free? Let me see if I can this find out. Can we invoke prior to the prophet? Um, I'm trying to find what was the name of the video. Hold on. I think, I think it was about invoking. Hold on. And then you will see your Sheikh saying clearly that the Kuffar are the same as you. Both of you, you invoke God, idols, beside Allah. Both of you worship the same God, Allah. 
Uh, let us see. Maybe this one here. So Okay, let's see this one. Has the intention to call them as gods. So, what is the ruling on that? First of all, do not take knowledge from the likes of me or the likes of him. Take knowledge from real scholars. This <laughs> here you see another another side of the stupidity of this religion. This guy on TV to teach you about Islam, and now he's saying to you, Well, you know what? Turn off your TV, don't watch me because I'm an idiot. Don't take knowledge from me. Take it from the scholars. Did you come and do you see stupidity? So if you are saying to them, Don't take knowledge from me, are you what are you doing there? Continue, Abdul. Madness. Quote unquote renowned scholar. He's a die. He does not qualify to be a he's, scholar. He's a guy. He's a student of knowledge. Hmm. So there are so many of us. We are fortunate to be famous because Allah has blessed us with this. The American. Gift. I'm telling you this. When you my, want fr to my friend, the one who blessed you with the internet is the American, specifically the Pentagon, specifically the Army of USA. It's not Allah. So don't go there. Even the internet now became from Allah. Here we go. The hijack the internet and the internet now became Islamic, a blessed from Allah. Knowledge, proper knowledge, especially when it comes to Aqeedah. <laughs> Don't go to Tom, Dick and Harry. Don't mm. go to people who keeps keep on. What do you mean? We cannot go to the tit boy? The tit boy, SMC. You know, Mimi, Fifi, Susu, Dudu. No, we cannot. Oh, okay. Switching in the. Uh, uh, so those who adopt. Yeah, this video obviously somebody did editing for it. I mean, this guy, what? You see, this guy who copied this video, he, he, this is what they do copy paste. But they cut, they don't copy paste, they copy cut. I mean, why you don't put the video of the guy as it is? for all, most of their life, a particular opinion. Then they change to a second opinion. Like Muhammad, muta is halal. Then muta is haram. Then muta is halal. Then muta is haram. <laughs> well, give them some time and they will change to a third opinion. R right, yeah. Are these people worthy of being followed? No way. In Matters of Aqeedah? No way. Definitely not. Definitely. Now, Mehwish says that he says that it's permissible. I doubt he says it's permissible. I would suggest or presume that he said it is not shirk, but it is prohibited. Because if he says that it is permissible, then he would have gone to the dark side, hmm. which is the super Sufis who believe and... If you ask the Muslims, is the Sufi Muslims? They say yes. Now the Sufi are not Muslims. All the, all the people in Turkey are not Muslims, no more. They are not. The Shishan, they are not Muslims. Anyone is Sufi, half of Egypt is not, is, you know, Mimi, the dead boy, the dead boy. Oh, I have a party in my backyard. Wow, look at this, four eagles. What? Let me record them. Hold on. Come on, buddy. He hide behind the tree. I don't know if you can hear the eagles, guys. Can you hear them? They are making the noise. Look, 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 look. What's happening here? How come too many of them? Oh boy. Anyway, <clears throat> so uh, brother and sisters, uh, sorry for like, you know, they, they disturb my thought. Uh, you know, they are beautiful, beautiful birds, you know. And by the way, eagle is from Allah. Brother. Yeah. 
And he's a Muslim. Worship truly the graved people. But he thinks that it's a sinful thing, but it's not shirk. And why would someone say that? Nowadays, we are in an era where people compromise their religion. Mm. So in order to gather as many people around us and to gather as many followers, being a tolerant person, advocating of tolerance, being okay with all strands See? of the society. That's what they do. They compromise their own religion. So they try See? to walk a very thin line. Did you hear it, people? And they say, we cannot label people as mushrik because there's so many of them. Well, Allah Azza wa labeled them in the Quran when he said, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُوا أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مُشْرِكُونَ The vast majority of them, of the people, the inhabitants of earth, would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. Did you hear it? Muslims, they compromise these days lying about their religion in order to gain more people to join Islam. So when a Muslim, he come in like a speaking corner or etc., he, he, he declaim all true things about Islam. Like when you debate them, do Allah have body part or who said so? They deny it. In order to win an argument, even if it's temporarily, just to fool the crowd. That's what the Sheikh was saying, and this is true. What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Did you hear it? The belief in Allah is the same as the belief of the pagan and the idol worshippers. Islam is the same, same religion. Listen carefully. This is not me who said that. Inhabitants hmm. of earth would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe. Hmm. Used to believe that Allah is the provider, See? that Allah is the giver of life and death, See? that Allah is the creator, See? that Allah is the facilitator of their affairs. Exactly. It's all over the Quran. If you read the Quran, don't look to scholars so and so different with scholars so and so. Go to the sources. In the beginning of the video, he says to us, Don't listen to me, go to the scholars. Now he's saying to you, Don't take, go to the scholars, listen to me. <laughs> Stupidity is amazing. So the pagan, did you hear it? Where is the guy Mara? Mara Bara. Pagan are Muslims. They worship the same God. They worship Allah. They believe He is the provider. They believe He is the creator. They believe, they believe. They, they, this is the pagan, the pagan. You Muslim call them pagan and they are Muslims like you. So what are different? The Quran says to us in black and white that Pagans and idol worshippers believed in Allah Azza wa Do you hear it? This is their belief, but associated others with him. The Muslim today, they associate it with the Arab associate before the black stone and the Kaaba. When Muhammad says the black stone and the Yemeni corner, whoever of, the, of you touch them, it erase his sin. Well, this is the same as the Arab too, the pagan. You Muslims are pagan too. Let us see how that will work. Let us go to the Hadith. I'm typing, hold on. Let us see what the hadith 
says and why Muhammad he ordered the Muslims to touch those two corners the black stone here we go so the Sheikh he just said that the pagan before Islam they worship Allah they believe he is the creator he is the provider etc everything the Muslim believe additional to that they take with Allah a helper idols to intercede for them to Allah that is the black stone as you see and this is the Yemeni corner now the Yemeni corner is different story which is higher stupidity from Muhammad there's a temple in Yemen it's called the temple of al Makkah. you can search it in Google and this temple is to worship the moon god before historian they used to think and this is why I say not always what historian they say to you is true that this was the temple of the sun and at the end they were able to discover the the words like you know the language they were able to read it and they come to the conclusion that this is the temple of the sun sorry temple of the moon this is a temple built, built by the Sabian and this is where Islam is coming from let me show you They call it Barwan Temple. This is other name, but the, the, the known name is uh, Al Maqa. And this is what is left of the temple. I mean, this website you have to sign in and you have to log in, blah, 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 you know. But anyway, it is for the moon god. For the moon god. And this is again proof that the one who wrote the Quran is an idiot. Let us see here. You can search, I mean, you can search yourself, you will find it's all over, you know. Goddess Al Makkah, and this is where the name Mecca, by the way, is coming from, most likely. It's a copy of the original temple. So the, 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 uh, uh, you see here they use the Q letter because in Yemen some words they pronounce like a letter K they say Qa so this is al Makkah, al Makkah, the temple of al Makkah. so the Arab they wanted to have a competition and instead of going all the way to Las Vegas to play in the machine why we don't have a machine here when we do gambling here? So what they did, they went to a temple of Al Makkah and they brought some rocks from Al Makkah and they put it in the Kaaba. And this is why Muhammad saying, whoever touched those two, the black stone, and the Yemeni corner, it erases sin. This is the Yemeni corner. And you will notice here that the corner, this corner, the stones there are not in harmony with the other stones. They are different. And this is why the Kaaba here in this area is stripped. Why? Because it's of necessity. You have to expose it because people need to touch it. And if they touch it, your sin will be erased. And yet a Muhammad, and he come to you, and he said to you, pagan. 
even they will put police around those stones because some Muslim they come and they bring little knives and they try to steal little rocks from it and people fight over to get the clothes and touch the stones because everybody when I sent to a race child molesters criminals you name it same exactly for the black stone which is made in the shape of a vagina and even the Islamic book says that women before Islam they used to go around the Kaaba especially women who have no kids they cannot have kids or they want to get kids but they could not when they have their period they place their hand inside their private part and they grab whatever blood they can get from there and they place their hand inside the black stone citing a certain prayer and this is why the tafsir book says and the black stone used to be white like milk but the sin of mankind made it black and he explained why women they put their hand inside the, the, the black stone because those women believe they could not have babies because of their sin a sin they did and yet the Muslims always they throw things at you they say you are a drunk person when Muhammad he and his followers they are drunk they say to you you are pagan when Islam is nothing but paganism everything in Islam is a religion of stones there's a big sheikh his name is Al-Qaradawi he says I think it was Al Qaradawi he said that uh, he said what, what uh, when, I, when I, in interview he said why in Islam everything is a stone like we have to kiss the black stone we go around the stone uh, we have touched the stone and, and, and even when we do a, a go to shaitan he said this is what Islam is about it's not up to you Islam is going around the stone kissing a stone bowing down in front of a stone and throwing stones at shaitan this is Islam but in the same time the Muslims they accuse you that you are pagan even they are the one who bow down in front of stones And they are the one who cry in front of the stones. And they are the one who believe that touching stones will erase their sin. Why kissing a black stone, but not kissing a woman, pagan? Ali, I think you're being stupid here. Because my friend, I don't want to call you stupid because stupid ones can be insulted by calling you stupid. Uh, I don't know how Muslims think. I mean, what, what this guy here? What, what did you eat? I think this is the influence of camel urine, which your prophet he prescribed for you. Why kissing a black stone is pagan, but not kissing a woman, my friend? If your dad did not kiss your mom, we will not have a stupid one like you. A man he kisses a woman because this is sexual. Or he like her, or maybe they say she is his mother. But kissing the black stone for what? And the black stone is in the shape of a vagina. <laughs> I mean, where do those people come to us from? <clears throat> ah, here we go. Mara, she said, or he, I don't know. Kissing your mom does not mean you worship her. Are you Muslim believe that your black stone is your mom? Huh? Look, look, look how desperate they are. Look at the answers. And remember, they are the one who opened the topic and now they are trying to close it down. Kissing your mom is pagan? Is the black stone your mom? I and mean, do you see how silly and how confused they are and they do not know what to say? Is kissing your mom is haram? Is kissing your mom is pagan? Well, the, my mom is my mom. The black stone is what? My mom, she did feed me. She carried me. She hold me. She nursed me. She did all things to me. My mom is not a stone. Because they cannot explain their paganism, 
which they threw at us. Remember, they are the one who throw those things at us. Look, this guy, this guy, Marabara. I don't know this name is coming from where. It's like coming from the moon. Marabara. CP Christian Pagan. Look, they are the one who opened the topic and now they try to close it. But kissing is not required. No, it's required. It's a big time required. Let me prove you wrong, my friend. You see, Muslims are really silly when they try to defend the religion. Why this man is doing it? Because the prophet says, touching them erase your sin, so it is required. It became an act of worship in order to erase your sin. So don't tell me it's not required. And as long as it's not required, why the prophet he did it? And why he said to you, if you touch them, it erase your sin? It's not required, as you say. But as you see, no, it's required because it is the way to erase your sin. Right? Why do you quote a stone with worship? It is still a choice. Oh, so you are saying to me you have a choice to worship a stone, but it's not a must. <laughs> You're a genius. Okay, I want any one of you to tell me how touching a stone will erase your sin if you are not a pagan. If you are not a pagan, explain to me how touching stones in the Kaaba, and specifically not all the stones, the black stone and the Yemeni corner, which we showed you in the pictures. How that will erase your sin? Who will explain to us? Anyone? Pagans. You Muslims are pagans. And the sheikh, which we played his video, is saying the same. Is saying we Muslims and the pagan, we believe in the same thing. We are exactly the same copy paste. Actually, Islam is a copy of the previous pagan cult. Islam is not something new. The pagan, they worship Allah. The pagan, they believe in Allah. The pagan, they fear Allah. They pray to Allah and they go around the Kaaba and they kiss the black stone and Muhammad he did exactly follow the same steps of the pagans this is why this guy is saying to you we Muslims and the pagan we are exactly the same the majority of them of the people the inhabitants of earth would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk what is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? it's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers did you hear it? Same. Are you serious? Yes, sir. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe. Hmm. Used to believe that Allah is the provider, that Allah is the giver of life and death, that Allah is the creator, that hmm. Allah is the facilitator of their affairs. Did you see? It's exactly the Quran. It's all over the Quran. It's exactly the same religion. Paganism and Islam is exactly the same. They share the same God, the same worship, the same act. The same rituals. So what is different? Listen to what he was saying. What is different? If you read the Quran, don't look to scholars so and so different with scholars so and so. Go to the sources. The Quran says to us in black and white that pagans and idol worshippers believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. This is their belief, but associated others with him. See? Through invoking them. See? And nowhere in the Quran, if you read it from cover to cover, that you will find a distinction or segregation between when you make dua to someone who's dead, thinking that he's capable or not capable of your intention. Dua is dua. Allah says in many places that they invoke others than Allah. He did not call them gods in these ayahs. Allah says clearly that they invoke other than Allah and they don't have any benefit for them or can protect them from any evil. And okay, here you see actually, there's a there's a caliphate. He is a friend of Muhammad. He's a perverted man. His name is Umar al-Khattab. 
he exposed Muhammad and he said I know that you are used this stone <laughs> just because the Prophet kissed you I'm kissing you you're useless who was telling the truth Omar or Muhammad because Muhammad he says no the black stone is the right hand of Allah the black stone will come in the judgment they have tongue have eyes have uh, uh, and is going to witness intercede for you whoever touch it Muhammad he says the one who touch it it erase your sin Omar he said I know that you are harmless and useless do you see it Omar he got Muhammad busted copy paste just because the prophet did it I'm doing it okay hold on so if it is useless and harmless why the prophet did it do you see how stupid the solution is if it is useless and harmless why you kiss it now here we need to ask ourselves a question how we can match those here it says it is useless Muhammad he says it is useful to erase your sin do you see how silly stupid this cult is Ali he said it removes sin because the black stone is from Allah. Guys, look at this. Good. Okay, hold on. Shaitan is from Allah according to Islam. What does that mean? Why wine is from Allah. Adam, Eve, you and me supposedly according to your religion, which I believe not true, from Allah. So stone is a stone. And if this is true, why Umar accusing Muhammad to be a fraud, to be a liar? Because Umar, he said with clear words, you are useless. Secondly, as long the stone is coming from Allah and it erases your sin, who need Muhammad? And who need Allah? And who need Islam? All what we need to do is just to touch the black stone and that's it it erase our sin my friend who need the Quran who need the Hadith who need the Sheikh who need the Jibreel we don't need all what we need is the black stone it erase your sin no no brain brainless that's it go and touch the black stone if we ask Ali, as long as Ali is the genius who is volunteered to answer us, or Mara Bara, why the black stone is made in the shape of a vagina? What is the secret about the look? Any Muslim can answer? Is that like a coincidence? It is like because you like it this way? Is it more attractive? What is behind? The black stone is in the shape of a vagina. Is that because this is the stone of fertility? And this is why the women, they used to go and touch it when they have their period? Let us go and see the history of the Arab. The Arab worship stones. And this is in the time of Muhammad and nothing changed. If the Arab could not find the stone, is unique stone, let us say, they make a stone. Look at this. Sahih al-Bukhari. This is authentic. We used to worship stones. What, what? 
We used to worship stones. This is a person who lived in the time of Muhammad. This is not a century before, a century after. And when we found a better stone, then, then the first one, we would throw the first one and take the, the later one. Do you see it? Upgrade. He got a new TV. Do you see it? This is where the black stone is coming from. So they found the stone. It looked different from the rest. And look here it says, and if we could not get a stone, then we would collect some earth, i.e. soil, and then bring a sheep, sheep milk and milk, and that the sheep over it, <clears throat> and put the milk sheep over it. And perform what? Guys, be careful with me. And perform what? Tawaf around it. Do you see it? This is the Muslim Tawaf. Muslim, do you see it? This is the Muslim Tawaf. If you are worshipping Allah, but you are saying the black stone erase your sin. Well, the pagan before Muhammad, they do the same. They worship Allah. We just played the video for you. Yeah, you are just a pagan following the Arab pagan. You are you are you are a victim of the paganism of the Arab. Poor you. So after we even make a stone, if we could not find a good stone to worship, we bring sheep milk and we mix it with it. And then we go and do tawaf around it. Do you see it? That is what the Arab practice. And not only that, nothing to forget to mention that the practice around the Kaaba was the most awkward, crazy ritual. They used to go around the Kaaba naked totally naked and by the way until now the muslims are naked around the kaaba in case you don't know they just put a sheet no underwear no panties nothing it's just a sheet so they try to change a little bit and why they change muhammad he like a woman she was going around the kaaba naked and he felt jealous because he want to have her as a wife and you can find that in my book, Six and Allah. She was singing, making a point, going around the Kaaba, totally naked. And Muhammad, he saw her. He saw the nipples and the pebbles and the nipples and all the worst things. And then Muhammad, he told them, nobody go around the Kaaba naked after now. All those years, Muhammad was watching naked people go around the Kaaba, never open his mouth against it. Never. Do you remember the story of Jesus when he went inside the temple? Actually, it's not even the temple. It is in the yard of the temple. Not even the, 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 the deep yard, the outside yard. He flipped the tables on them. He said to them, you made the house of my father a bazaar. Muhammad watching people going naked, doing ritual nakedness in around the Kaaba, the house of his God. And he do nothing about it. He's watching. Totally naked. The question is, what was the religion, the practice, need or required women and men to be naked? You ask yourself. What is this religion? <clears throat> so, you throw at us paganism, and as you see, paganism came back at you harsh. And you throw at us and you say that we Christians, we drink and we get a drunk. Yeah, there's people that do that. 
but it's not encouraged in the Bible. The Bible says the opposite. And your God, he copy Paul. But Paul was more clear about it. Your God, he just said, this is uh, from Shaitan. And here you see the funny Muslims religion is. They claim that Islam is good religion. And they attack Paul nonstop. When we find that Allah, he still what Paul he said, and he put it in chapter 5, verse number 90. Almost word by word. If you drink wine and you get a drunk, do you go to heaven? According to Islam, yes. You do. Allah, he says, Allah, he forgive all sin, which is you do, except shirk. What does that mean? Worshipping someone beside him. Anything else is okay. Illa lemon. And then when this man, he was speaking in the video, that if you drink beer and the beer have low alcohol, have what? Low alcohol is okay. Well, we can do, use that method for everything. I have low pork in the food. I have low uh, drugs in the food. Low cocaine, cocaine. Low, low, low. And actually he gave us an example showing the stupidity where he says, if you drink six packs of this, you don't get drunk. And if you drink six champagne, champagne you get drunk. So how come the first one is halal, the second one is not? Because obviously, what is forbidden should be is making you drunk or getting drunk, not a drinking. That's what you said. And here you see the hypocrisy of this cult. They legalize anything they want. They approve anything they want, when they want. And they have beer that is halal. <clears throat> How do we judge? We do that through the end result. If we have a beer that is called non-alcoholic and it has 0.3 or 0.5% alcohol in it, doctors and professionals say that if you consume a six pack, it would not intoxicate you. But isn't it Jesus said, little of it bless your heart? Guys, is it true that Jesus says little of it to bless your heart? Do you see this hypocrite cult? So now he's saying the drink, as long as it have little of it, it's a bless your heart. So you don't forbid alcohol totally in Islam. It's a lie. And Muhammad used to teach Muslims how to make, you know, to make to make alcohol. And the Quran praise alcohol. And what make it more funny that Allah claimed that alcohol is a miracle from Allah. Muhammad trying to explain to the Arab, the Arab they love to, love to drink. Do you see a drink and you get drunk? Do you understand how this is happening? It's a miracle from Allah. The verse in front of you. <clears throat> Do not assure Islam is based in scholars. What does that mean? Can you write the word correctly so we can read your words, Aisha? Why you are cutting the letters like this? Are you doing coding like we are the Morse coding of your prophet? If I try to use read your word, it's like Muhammad receiving Quran. How Muhammad received Quran, you remember? Muhammad, he said, he received Quran Sometime in the sound, the sound of a bell. 
<clears throat> Look at this mad person. <clears throat> How Allah he sent him Quran. This is an illness. You can go and check any doctor. Those people who have epilepsy, some kind of uh, uh, mental issues. I'm not, well, not making fun of them, by the way. I mean, if you are sick with something, that will not make you a bad person. I mean, this is you are just unlucky. Uh, this is what Muhammad he hear when Jibreel he give him Quran. A sound of a bell? Okay, this is verse number one. All right. Now I will give you verse number two. Yeah, this one is longer. I will give you verse number three. Sorry, this is a Christian verse, it's, it's by mistake. What the heck? The Prophet was receiving Quran as a sound of a bell, so it was not in Arabic? Okay, so Muhammad received a bell. How in the world he became Arabic? Okay, sir, okay. We are going to attack immediately. I mean, look at the... Isn't it obvious this guy is mentally ill? Even he says, فَيَفْ عَنِّي He is not aware. He is like, he, he, he faint, he go crazy. He is not aware of the world around him. And as long as you Muslims, <coughs> you claim that the Quran is preserved. That means the original Quran was the sound of a bell. Where we can find it? Who want to recite to me the Quran bell? Don't you say that the Quran is preserved? Will Muhammad receive a sound of a bell? And what make it more stupid, Muhammad, he said that the bell is the instrument of shaitan. Like, what the heck? The Prophet of Allah said, B, P, B, U, H, this is like a kind of a chemical thing, you know, Muhammad is a very high concentrated stupid chemical. The bell is one of the musical instrument of shaitan. Okay, that's wonderful. So Muhammad received what? The instrument of shaitan. I mean, it's super clear. Muhammad saying that, not me. What Muhammad received? How he received the Quran? He received a sound of a bell. Hmm? He received what? A sound of a bell. Ringing bell. But what is the sound of the bell? It is the instrument of shaitan. Look at this genius. So in one hand he says, shaitan instrument is bell. 
On the other hand, he said, Allah give me Quran by the sound of the bell. And not only that, Muhammad he said that angels will not accompany anyone who have a bell. Can you believe it? So how the angel came to Muhammad and he gave him a sound of a bell? I heard the Messenger of Allah saying, the angels do not enter a house which there is a small bell. Look at the phobia. He's a breed come in my house. The breed is big, so big he can cover the horizon according to Muslims. He has 600 wings. He saw little bell in my house. He cannot get in, sorry. Hey, Jibreel, come on. Look, look at this guy. There's a difference between ringing bell and the, the instrument of bell. Like, what the heck? My friend, somebody told you that shaitan, he is playing bell music. This is the bell. Muhammad, read, read the height in front of you. It says, angels will not enter even a house of a bell. What do you mean there's a difference? Guys, there's a difference between the bell, the sound, the instrument of the bell and the bell sound. Like, what the heck? <laughs> Do you see how the try explain to us? And how did they try to defend? A big failure. They don't know what to do. In the same time, as long as Muslims agree that Muhammad received Quran as a sound of a bell, what happened after? Did he deliver to you a bell or he delivered to you Arabic? How he can Muhammad transform the sound of a bell into Arabic? Who wanna help us? Anyone? And the funny, they say we are pagans. Hmm. Look who is talking. Look who is talking. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? But just be careful. Anything is going to be used against you when you talk to me. I'm not like a rest, you know. That's why Muslims, they advise each other not to call me and uh, if they call me like uh, the guy with his name the dead boy he said to the muslims do you like me to debate christian prince said, sure like brother you don't know as he said what do you who, who you like me to debate i suppose he is a hero he said brother a christian prince is making other people leave islam said, oh, okay okay and now suppose they will step a debate all right away he played for me like this is how much they are intimidated cowards potatoes the tit boy who is a muslim who is a sheikh not the tit boy he dared to debate me the golden shower boy they accuse you of what they say if we quote their prophet they say you are a sexual predator they say it it's okay have you ever even heard of a prophet he ordered women to give their tits to adult mature men? I mean, what? This is obviously a proof that Muhammad is mentally ill. I mean, what kind of advice? What? Can you tell me why Jewish they kiss? You go and ask them, this is not my religion. Same time, if they do that, they have to do it based on the Bible. If it's not there, that's mean they are just following tradition. I'm being stupid. Very simple. You can go and do it. You see, when we judge, we judge the founder of the cult. So when we say Muhammad, he kissed the black stone, you cannot say, oh, Muslims, we have nothing to do with this. This is a tradition of somebody. It's your prophet who kiss it. It's your prophet who claim it erased their sin. So if a Jewish guy, he do something, this is business. This is between him and God. But did his God say that to him? The God in the Old Testament said it clearly, make no images of what up in heaven or down on earth. Simple and clear.
And one more time you call us pagan, I will send you free shipping and hand it into Allah. Black stonky, sir. You want to insult? Try me. I'm a Middle Eastern. So if you like to insult, feel free. I will return it in the top of the head of your prophet with no mercy. So watch your tongue and behave, black stonky, sir. So they drink wine and they get drunk. And even the Quran says that the Muslims they used to drink and get drunk and go to the mosque to pray. Can you believe it? And then when the Arab, they start making fun of Muhammad and says, what kind of companion you have? They are a bunch of a drunken. What Muhammad he said, he did not say it's forbidden for you. He said, don't go to the prayer when you are drunk, okay? No, read it, it's in front of you. Do you see it? And here you can tell that Muhammad was a very lousy person. He's a hippie. He had double standard. And if a Muslim, he will say to you, oh, Islam came in stages because he cannot forbid them right away from drinking. Why they cannot? Are you trapping them? Either you accept my belief or you don't. Are you trapping the person? Yes, Islam will trap you. Islam is a trap. Get in, you can't get out. Do you remember the Sheikh in the video? He says, don't be like those who these days they compromise in order to gain numbers. You remember the video? They compromise to gain what? To gain numbers. Talking about Muslims. Well, Muhammad was doing that. Actually, everything this guy he said about the pagan is exactly about Muhammad himself. Muhammad, he did the same. People as mushrik, because there's so many of them. Well, Allah Azza wa labeled them in the Quran when he said, وَمَا يُؤْمِنُ أَكْثَرُهُمْ بِاللَّهِ إِلَّا وَهُمْ مشركون. The vast majority of them, of the people, the inhabitants of earth, would not believe in Allah except while committing shirk. What is their belief in Allah Azza wa Jal? It's the same belief of the pagans and the idol worshippers. Mm. Are you serious? Yeah. yeah. The pagans and the idol worshippers used to believe. Used to believe that Allah is the provider, that Allah is the giver of life and death, that Allah is the creator, that Allah is the facilitator of their affairs. It's all over the Quran. If you read the Quran, don't look to Scholars so-and-so differed with scholars so-and-so. Go to the sources. The Quran says to us in black and white that pagans and idol worshippers believed in Allah Azza wa Jal. This is their belief, <coughs> but associated others with him. Through invoking them. And nowhere in the Quran, if you read it from cover to cover, that you will find a distinction or segregation between when you make dua to someone who's dead, thinking that he's capable or not capable of your intention. Dua is dua. Hmm. Allah says, in Isn't it the Quran says, Allah and Allah and the angels praying on the Prophet? And here you find another stupid thing in this book. You see, Muhammad is a very sick person. He wanted to have all the attention. To the point even Muhammad he claimed that the whole world is created for the sake of him. Can you believe it? The trees, everything, grass, fruits, sky, sun, Everything created for the sake of Muhammad.
And let me show you what I'm talking about. To prove to you that this person is mentally ill, with no question, Okay. Look at this. I don't know if the text is clear for you because it's not too much dark. If not you, Muhammad, Allah said, if you, if, uh, if not for you, O Muhammad, I would have, not, would not have created the creation. Who's talking supposed to Allah? Do you see how sick pagan this person? This is a pagan teaching that everything, because you see, Muhammad here is copying what the Bible says about Jesus. And what make it pagan, because Muhammad is a man, not God. I mean, the Muslim, do you Muslim believe he's God? You say no. But it says here, everything created for him. The Bible says about Jesus, everything created for him and by him. For him, by him. Here it says, If not for you, O Muhammad, I would not have created the creation as if it's saying that Muhammad is Jesus. Do you see it? Answer Aisha, I don't know what she is saying. Anyone can understand what she is saying? Christian Prince is a coward. He know what it's, I say it is real. This is why he's hiding from you. Well, Aisha, do you like to call me? Hiding it from you, potato? What hiding from what from me? Do you like to call me? And don't worry, I'm not going to ask you to practice breastfeeding as the prophet said. And use normal letters so we can read your words. Stop being an idiot. And then he continue. This is the Muslim answers now. The answer, the question asking, is this, is this hadith is accurate? Is it good? The answer is, indeed, the Prophet of Allah is the reason for the creation of Adam. Peace on him and the universe, brother. The Prophet, if the Prophet of Allah was not in existence, then the Arsh, the throne of Allah, the Kursi, the chair of Allah, the tablet of Allah, the pen of Allah, the sky, the earth, the heaven, the hell, would not be exist. Do you see it? Pagans. I'm not even in Pal Talk. Yeah, why I want to go in Pal Talk? Why somebody might debate me? If there's somebody might debate me, you are not even in Pal Talk. Here we go. I will look in Paltok. Who, who is a Muslim going to call me? Hmm. They complain about I am not in Paltok. The second I go to Paltok, nobody would nobody would do anything. Eh, just be my witness. Let us see. Look how many is asking if I am in Paltok. Hmm? Look how many. Now we go in Paltok. Eh. One, two, three. Bingo. We are in Paltok. Who is a Muslim when I talk to me? <clears throat> Any Muslim? What? Hello? Potatoes. They talk about come to Pal Talk. You are not even in Pal Talk. How we can call you in Pal Talk? And then we go to Pal Talk and nobody call us. You are not even potato. You are a mashed potato. All of you are heroes. Especially after I log off. 
or you see a Muslim, he saw, he say, he go online, he says, brother, I have seven Christian friends, tell him to come here. <laughs> I tell <challenge> him. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know if he is. Uh... There's a Muslim. He texts me from before. I don't know if he is watching us now. Do we have any Muslim explain to us how Allah He created the whole universe for Muhammad? Everything created for Muhammad. The Prophet of Allah said, Allah said, when Adam made a mistake, which means he committed sin, he asked, Oh Allah, I ask you for the sake of Muhammad to forgive me. Guys, look at this story. Look how hilarious. Allah said, Oh Adam, how do you recognize Muhammad when I have not created him yet? Adam said, Allah, when you created me and blow into my me the spirit, I lifted my head and saw written on the arsh and the, the which means your throne, that the shahada, there's no God but Allah and the moon God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Hey, Adam he saw it there. So I got to know that you would only join your name with the one, the most beloved one to you. Allah said to Adam, O oh Adam, you have spoken the truth. Indeed, Muhammad is the more beloved to me than anything. Do you see Muslims? Who is a Muslim agree with this story? Who is a Muslim he agree with this story? Look at them. They don't know. They go between the bushes now. Pagans. Pagans. Religion of the pagans. Allah Himself is exists for one reason to make Muhammad happy. Allah. He joined his name with Muhammad. Did you see it? It's written in front of you. What paganism is? What the Sheikh he said about paganism? To join the name of Allah with the name of an idol or a man. That is Islam. Shahada is a paganism. It's in the front of your eyes. They joined the name of Muhammad with the name of their God. They made a Shahada, which is the way to get into Islam is to join Muhammad's name and the name of Allah. And she can text me, Aisha and Balto. I, as long as she is not six years old as the wife of the Prophet. If she are adult and you are over 20 something, you are welcome to call me. If you are six years old or under the age, don't call me. I will hang up on you. Do we have any Muslim want to explain to us why the pagan Muslim? So I mean, anyway, the video is going like all over the place here. But as you see, we are just refuting the Muslims who speak about us. But everything they claim about us, we don't have it. It is them who have it. Prostitution is the religion of Allah. Even the Quran said it clearly. Force not your girls, who are they? The slaves, to do prostitution. And if you forgive them, if you force them, Allah is all merciful. There's no punishment. The Arab women, they start complaining that their husband, they are they turn into pimps. Pimps, literally pimps. They capture girls and they force them into prostitution. And then Muhammad, when I make himself look better in front of the Christians and the Jews and everybody, they are, right, they are disgusted by this religion. So what he said, 
Force not your girls into prostitution if they choose a chastity. What if, so if they agree, if they agree, we it's okay. Yeah, that's what the verse saying. Force not your maids to prostitution when they desire chastity. In order you may gain and gain again good or money. But if any one of you force them, Allah is all merciful. Do you see it? This is a license for prostitution, especially if the girl agree. Do you see it? There's no verse in the whole Quran says don't do prostitution. The verse saying the opposite. Don't force them to do it. If they agree, you are good to go. And if you force them, there's no punishment. There's no, Allah is unmerciful. My friend, you do not need a phone. You just download PalTalk, it's for free. There's no need for phone. I don't use phone. All right. Why do you want to use phone? Pal talk. It's a free program. All will take you is just sign in. Take you two seconds. Download the app and contact me. Any Muslim? And look now how long I am in Pal talk. For how long I am in Pal talk. Nobody is texting me. It will go on live. Do you see me? Online. Where is the Muslims? Hmm? Where is the one who was crying? You are not even in pal talk. That's what they do. And now after I log off, a guy will go and make a video says Christian Prince I challenge you Christian Prince okay here we go go live no problem give me your pal talk I will call you you can be live in your channel no problem <laughs> doesn't matter I will call you even if you are too little for me no problem and if you claim to be big so big I would love it so people will have fun who is a Muslim is going to call his sheikh so he can call me and show us the truth. Hmm? So if you drink six packs of halal beer, it's okay. If you drink six of champagne, it's not or 0.5% alcohol in it. Doctors and professionals say that if you consume a six pack, it would not intoxicate you. Hence, it is halal. See, the stupidity. Well, who said if you drink a little bit of wine, that will make you drunk? I remember I used to have a Muslim friend, he's a Muslim. Actually, he's a Shia. You know, I consider him as a friend because he don't really follow Islam at all, you know. But this guy, he drink, he love vodka. You know vodka? Very strong. He drink the whole vodka as if he's drinking water and he don't get drunk. Based on what he just said, if you drink a bottle of vodka and you don't get drunk, it's halal. He just, we just heard him saying that. So what's the point of this forbidden drinking? Just say forbid to be drunk. And that's it. And what make it more ugly, he said that doctors advise to drink it as it can be a medicine. So alcohol is not bad. As anything else, if you use too much of it, it can kill you, it can harm you. Too much fat will harm you. Too much meat will harm you. Too much sugar will harm you. Too much salt will harm you, like any food. But because Islam is an empty cult, it's empty. And Muhammad was desperate trying to build a religion or something look like a religion. The Jews have rules, so Muhammad, he start making rules. And 
the rules get more complicated with his superstition like you know the black dog is the devil if you go and have intercourse with your wife shaitan will wrap himself around your penis Muslim is a person who live under conspiracy situation. Maybe the admin can post the link for you about this penis thing. So if a Muslim he want to go to have sex with his wife, now he is worried because shaitan will round himself around the penis. Like what? So now your wife, she is like excited, waiting for her husband. She put makeup, she put perfume, and now the Abdul is coming. And now the Abdul is stand in front of her suddenly. He cannot get it close yet because he have to recite certain prayer. Otherwise, shaitan will round himself around the penis of this Abdul. And then the shaitan will do boom, boom to your wife. What is my thought about Mufti Abu Layth? Even this guy need my thought. Eh, they are comedian and they are they laugh at their religion. What do you want more? This guy we should pay him. What is my thought? <clears throat> Even this guy need my thought. And you will find in the internet tons of stories about Muslim men, their wives is having an affair with the genie. And those are truly story, by the way. And they happened. There is witnesses. If you read my book, Sex and Allah, and you will see what I'm talking about. Question, Assalamu Alaikum. I'm married for 24 years. My marriage has not been one that I can be happy about. 24 years, not good. Okay. My argument have uh, failed my marriage. <clears throat> about four years ago, my wife starting changing. I have noticed that she would be sexually aroused, which I have not seen before in her sleep. And when I wake her, she get she be angry with me. I need your help. Like Abdul, you idiot. Obviously, your wife, she is horny. You are not doing your job. You wake her up to tell her what? You are horny? Do something. Hey, honey, wake up, wake up. So the woman, she is like in the limbo and the Abdul in the bimbo. So he wake her up to tell her, wake up. Well, why you are waking up? Either you wake her up to do what you need to do or don't wake her up so she gets angry. And now I need your help since my marriage is heading to divorce. <laughs> now the Sheikh will answer. Look at this, look, look at the, the look at this knowledge, brother. She's right. In the sense of sexual dream, like nightmare, a dream, illusion, holm, from shaitan only. In the sense of inspiration not in the sense of shaitan affects something in the person Kadi Ayed this is supposed to be a big judge Muslim he said and anyway, let us see now the guy he's is giving him recipe to stop his wife from being so horny at night you need to recite Ya Wadud 100 times <laughs> hey married guys if your wife is so horny and you do not know what to do with her, brother, say Ya Wadud 100 times a day. Okay? And your wife, she will not be horny at all. Let us start me and you right now. Ya Wadud, 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 Ya Wadud. Look, the woman, she's she's coming down now. Look, 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 she is not. She's not uh, doing that. Like, she's doing a little bit. Like, the more I say it, yeah, we we'll do it. Yeah, we'll. I mean, look at this genius. This is Islam, super superstition story, stupidity. So if you say 100 times a day, brother, it doesn't happen to you. 
That's deep. And crazy stuff. The truth is, it is possible for a human and a human being and jinn to have intercourse. A Thalavi mentioned in the tafsir that in, in this meaning, and this is why here the prophet he says, if a man he have to pray, he have to recite a prayer. Yeah. So shaitan he round himself around your penis if you don't say the prayer. So Muhammad he was trying to create as much as fictions in order to control your brain, your thinking. Uh, do you remember me? You made me a moderator when I was a Muslim. I don't remember you, Yasmin. I don't know. So what happened, Yasmin? Are you okay now? Are you okay, my friend? So you are the Muslim now? Oh, Yasmin, come on. You don't wanna. You don't want to get to heaven, and you will be jailed in a big tent. Come on. How in the world somebody he lose such an opportunity, brothers and sisters? If you are a Muslim woman. In heaven, you will be in jail. So beautiful. Only your husband can see you. No shopping. No mall. For eternity. You are going to be jailed, brother. In a tent. Brother. How beautiful. I know all women like to be jailed, you know? I mean, they love it. Just put them in jail. They go crazy, women. You know, they love it. They love it. It's one of their hobbies. Oh, you are Christian now? Well, good for you, Jas uh, uh, Jasmine. Yasmin. Okay, Yasmin, you know what? I'm going to make you an admin, my sister. I don't know you, but I trust my instinct. Here we go. You can add me now. But don't bounce me out of the chat. Like, come on. Don't abuse your power. So, wherein both will be those medians restraining their in their gallants upon their husbands. And no genie open the sexual skin for them yet, brother. I mean, this is the God, and this is the only God who describe for you what is inside the vagina. Can you believe it? Do you see it? Look, Yasmin Qureshi, now she became a blue. Alhamdulillah. Allah made you blue. Hola, Lu. Uh, my friend, don't make an account to, the, to, to contact me in Paltalk. I don't contact people there. I just use Paltalk to debate. <coughs> okay, let's call this Muslim. Hello? Hello? Do you hear me, my friend? Hello? Hello? Yes, do you hear me, my friend? Yes, yes, I can hear you. If, if you can speak louder, that will be better. So, so you are a Muslim, right? Yes. All right. So what do you like to say to me? Go ahead. Well, I've been listening to your videos for a while, and... Uh, the main argument for this right now is I want to know more about Christianity, but because from your side it's mostly against Islam, so I want to know actually more, like it doesn't act prove its Christianity is correct. So that's why I want maybe more news from your side. Yeah, you know, my friend, when I prove Islam to be wrong, you are right. It doesn't prove Christianity to be right. 
But uh, because you are a Muslim, it's very important for me first to get rid of, let us say, for me, I believe like Islam is like a virus infection. So in order to help you to become a Christian, first I have to cleanse you and clear you from the idea of Islam. So if we reach that point, I will be more than happy to answer any of your question about Christianity. So we can we go there first into Islam and see what keeping you as a Muslim, why you are still a Muslim? <clears throat> well, I don't know, like, uh, so far, like, because you are raised for it for over 30 years, so it's impossible to think otherwise. Same question you asked the Christian, why are you Christian? 99% they will ask because you are born this way. Well, you know, but this is not an answer, really. I mean, in Christianity, the, the Bible says, no, you are not a Christian I, unless I, you are I, born I, again. Unless I, you are born again. What I, does that mean? Let me, let me answer, my friend. In Christianity, a Christian is not somebody is born of a Christian family. In Christianity, is someone is born again with a Christ, which means he accepted Christ as Savior. He understands what Christ he did to him. He understands who is a Christ to him. And he decides to follow Christ. That will make you born again. Otherwise, born of a Christian family does not make you Christian. In Islam, yes. So now, you said you are a Muslim for 30 years. Still, what is holding you to be a Muslim? Because still, I mean, you can change. I mean, what, uh, it's, not, you know, it's a belief. It's a belief inside you. Either you believe it or you don't believe it. So do you believe in Islam really? Or you are just a Muslim by name? Well, now that I'm watching more of the videos, now it's uh, all like uh, changing my thought process. That's why, that's why, but at the same time, it's like, uh, what you're advocating Christianity, it's like jumping from one religion to another. So that's why it's, it's also confusing. No, I don't but, want... Uh, because you're offering the alternative. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't want you to jump because you can still leave Islam and don't accept Christianity. And we are not like, uh, you know, like buy one, get one free. No, <laughs> this is not the deal. The deal is it's a choice you make at the end of the day. You accept, you don't accept, this your business. For me, I help you. I help you in both. I help you to leave Islam. I help you to understand Christianity. At the end of the day, it is you who believe or not. It's not me. It's not about uh, alternative. And you know, this is not me. Okay, stay at here. It's up to you. I mean, this is this is a choice you make, my friend. So you, as a Muslim, if somebody now say to you, you are a Muslim, and say to you, okay, what make you still believe in Islam? If there's anything, you, you said you are watching my videos, and that making you changing your thoughts. I like that, but. Is it if there is anything you think it's good in this religion or make you think for a second or for a moment that Islam not totally a lie? Like you are not sure? So maybe I can help you in that part? If anything, like you're exposing a few parts that are, uh, let's say, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, I mean, the uh, child marriage and all of these things and the, uh, his uh, son-in-law uh, uh, like uh, marrying Zaina. I don't remember the names on this computer. Yes, yeah, Zaina. But, uh, <coughs> uh, but there are still good parts of it and this is the only part that you can use. Like what? Give, like, me, the, give uh, me the good part. Like uh, giving charity for example. Okay, like but to people, uh, okay, hold on. Uh, okay, I will go with you, guys. Giving charity, but don't you know that this charity is a theft? So you attack the Christians, and you take your money, or the Jews, or the Hindus, and then you claim that you are giving charity from a money you did not earn. Is that fair? Yeah. So sorry, could you repeat that? So the charity you are giving, Muslims, Muhammad who was talking about giving charity was talking to who? to people who they are around him, right? Okay, the charity is was the booty from the booty from the money you stole from the Christians and the Jews and the, and the Arab. So you attack us and then suddenly you became a good guy by giving charity. So I go to your house, I steal $10,000 and then I give donation $20 for the poor, a poor Muslim. And that make me following a good religion. How that can be? Uh, this, of course, is, uh, yeah, if, if it's by force, if it's uh, attacking uh, like innocent people, yes, then, then 
Let me show you from the Quran the proof of what I say. I don't like to say things without, you know, the proof. And know that whatever of war booty that you may gain, verily one fifth is to Muhammad. <laughs> and then uh, to, to the charity or those who they are close to the Prophet, the, the, the relative of the Prophet, and then to the orphans. But this is all from a theft. All this money, Muhammad did not pay a penny from his pocket yet. This is coming only from the booty. Even the Quran called it booty. So where is the where is the charity? I'm going to go to the highway and I'm going to stop people's cars and steal their money. You know, I have weapon. And then after I finish robbing like 50 people, then I go to a church and I give them, you know, a hundred dollar. This is the charity. Mm -hmm. This is not a charity, this is a theft. So, but, uh, okay. But, uh, but like, uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm convinced with many points. Said the, I'm just holding because it's been a long time and uh, and it feels strange to to suddenly change. It's 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 uh, still scary, but uh, that's why I want to ask you more about the if because if I know more about the Christianity part, maybe it it is it will be the final push for me. So so uh, I don't know if it's okay if I can ask. Uh, or specifically on Christianity or not. All right, but can you, can you speak louder? So, but, but so, uh, if we speak about Christianity, is that what going to make you leave Islam, my friend? Yes. All right, so what is the question about Christianity? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, okay, for the, like, it's, it's basic questions, but uh, <coughs> why did Jesus, for example, why did he have to die for the sins, why, uh, he, he, because if, he, if he's God, he can he can decide this for us. He can he can try to forgive us without the need of him to die. So why did he need to die? Well, first of all, he did not need to die. You see, this is there's nowhere in Christianity it says he need to die. You know, this is a very wrong word to use. The Bible says, "For God he loved the world; he sent his only begotten Son." So he loved you and me and all people including muslims hindus buddhas and this is what in the in the book of john chapter 3 it says so for god so loved the world so he sent his only begotten son so he did not send him and the purpose is not the death of jesus the purpose is to save you and the bible says in in the bible in, in, the, in the verse as an example and let me open it so i can read uh, uh, without because in English sometime I might miss a word for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that what who, who's ever believed in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life so Jesus did not come and okay I'm going to die and then they will be saved this is not what Christianity teach Jesus come to save us and then if you believe in Jesus, whatever Jesus did, including the cross, you are saved. Are you getting my point? Hello? Ouch. Something wrong with this connection. Hello? Hello? Yeah, something wrong with the connection. Did you, did you hear my question? Did you hear my answer? Did you hear my answer? Yeah, here we go. All right. So Mr. Cobra, he's a Muslim, you know, and this is how what he said to me today. All right, and we will call him back. Hello? Yes, my friend, we are with you. Hello. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So the, I changed the microphone. Is it better now? Oh, it's way better, actually. Very good. 
Yeah. So, okay. so did, did, you okay. my, did, you, did you hear my answer? What I said to you? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the 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 purpose is at least the, the purpose. You know, it's not Jesus. Okay, Jesus. He have, have, he have to die, and then you you have to live. No. Part, huh? You know, this is what Jesus did, and this is what they did to him. You know, if Jesus he knew the future, he knew what they would do to him, and this is what we did to him as a human to him. But still, he loved us. Still, he coming to save us. This is telling us how much love he have for us. Imagine somebody coming to save you, and he knew you will call him names, you will make fun of him, you will reject him, and even you are going to kill him. Still, he do it. So this is what Christianity is based on, love. The Bible says God is love. So for God, he loves you. He sent you the Messiah. And then whoever believe in the Messiah and whatever the Messiah did or stand for, this person will not perish and he will live forever. All right. And so, so basically, if, if you accept him, if you accept uh, him, if, if you accept him, basically, and uh, okay, well, how, and how do you do this? Uh, how does it work? Like, uh, for example, in, in Islam, you have to say specific words in no, in, no. In, in in Arabic. No, how does no. this work? In, this is in this is a this is a pagan practice. You have to say certain things. For in Christianity, believing in Jesus is a personal relationship with God so you say to him whatever you want you say the Lord I believe in you the Messiah I believe that you came in this earth I became in the I, I believe in the Father the Son the Holy Spirit I believe I believe that you you've been crucified to save me I believe that you came to save me and I believe that everything you did according to the Bible is true and I want to follow you you say whatever you want I'm just telling you an idea we don't we don't believe in some repeated shahada this is copy paste mm -hmm. and it's not personal you have to say personal words to the lord from your heart not just uh, hypocrite words you know like somebody said something we copy and we say we repeat there's not no such a thing like this in christianity you don't have even to pray in a certain time you pray any time you want pray non stop if you want so in christianity you have relationship with your lord and your Lord, he said, knock at my door, I will open for you, which means anytime you feel you want to talk to him, talk to him. And the Messiah, he forbid us not to be the same as the hypocrite and as if he is talking about Islam. So he said to us, don't pray in the corners like the hypocrites. Why they pray in the corners? Because they like to show everybody that they are praying. They like to uh, glorify it, that they are good, they are nice people, you know. So we pray in public in order to get the attention. Jesus, he forbid us from that. So if you become a Christian, you have to forget about everything in Islam. Your prayer is personal. Your worship is personal. Your uh, fellowship with God is personal between you and God. Anyone else, you have no business. If we go right now to Matthew, chapter six, it says, and when you pray, you shall not be the same as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men Verily I say unto you, they have their reward, which means their hypocrisy. They want it to be seen. And then he said, and you, if you want to pray, you go to your closet. The closet is like a small room, which is it's locked. You know, this is the closet. And then you pray, you close your door, and then you pray to the Father, which is in secret. And the Father, which sees you in secret, shall reward you openly do you see how christianity work so christianity is totally one million percent the mm -hmm. opposite from islam and then he says and when you pray use not vain repetition don't repeat and say word blah 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 blah. you know god is not a fool he understands what you want don't repeat like the muslims keep repeating this prayer etc as 
you know, uh, uh, to make it simple, you know, uh, just don't repeat yourself, God is not deaf, <laughs> you know, you don't need to repeat a prayer for non-stop, just say whatever you want, do it in secretly, and this is why, like, you will not see a Christian saying, hey guys, I have to go and pray, most time they have to, oh, I'm fasting, oh, time to pray, oh, brother, we have to pray, because it is a hypocrisy cult, and Jesus, when he did order us, his order still is a choice, which means you can be a hypocrite and you pray in public. And that now somebody might say, so if we go in the church, are we a hypocrite? No, church is a, is a group worship. It's made to be group worship. But when you want to have relationship with the Lord, you pray in your closet in secret. And that is the only prayer, which is, we can say, uh, uh, it, it is like uh, from truly from your heart. The church is a place where we learn, where we share, and we can pray to the Lord from our heart too. But the one which is in secret is the blessed one because nobody will see you. You are not getting reward from this. So if I if I bow down and say, Lord, forgive me, obviously I'm not seeking anyone to glorify me because nobody saw me. It's just in private. People maybe think I'm a bad person, but in my private life, I pray maybe. Maybe I don't. So Jesus, he forbid us from being hypocrite and he want us to be truthful not like Islam. So now if you want to accept the Messiah, you say to him whatever you want. Anything from your heart. You tell him, I'm, you know, I believe in you. I believe that you are my savior. I believe that you die on the cross to save me. I believe in everything you did. You say whatever you want. And I like you. you may, I want to uh, show a few points like that are similar. You you mentioned today the the black stone, for example, and how it erases. I, as I understand, also if you want to to uh, be Christian, you also need to be baptized and you need to have water touch you. So so it is same thing. You you why would you need to kiss a stone? Why would you need to have water? to be with you it's the same concept like uh, that's why it's also confusing like uh, i'm just mentioning the similarities yeah for these points well, and well, I, th this is my point is it needed or not no you see the baptism we don't believe that this water will make you um, go to heaven it's not the water simply when you do baptism it's a symbolic of you accepting a new life and you are washing yourself from the previous in the same time, you are ready to receive the blessing of God and the Holy Spirit within you. So the baptism itself by water is not the water for us is holy. The black stone for them is holy. You kiss the black stone, your sin is erased. You do baptism or not, your sin is there. You see, when we say that uh, uh, Jesus, he paid for our sin, doesn't mean that you have a license for sin. You paid for sin. You know, I mean, you, you actually... Uh, you 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 paid by sin by doing sin, which means you are guilty. That is your payment. The first payment you do is your guilt. So the baptism is not going to be like a holy magical water by touching it. You are a new person, etc. It is God, which is going to be through you by accepting Him, by welcoming Him to your life. That will be within you. So the symbolic of the baptism is me accepting a new life and I wash myself from all the previous sin and the previous life. So it is not a pagan practice. We don't believe that the water is magical. It's not normal water. It can be a river. It can be even a, river, a water from the faucet. It's a symbolic. In the same time, the Bible teach us that the baptism is so important because you announce yourself to be a new person with God and you are willing to receive the Holy Spirit which is the Spirit of God to be within you. So have nothing to do with paganism, have nothing to do with worshiping water, have nothing to do with magical water. It is a new era in your life. It's like you are going in direction. Let us say you are going to the south and then suddenly you say the south is wrong direction. I'm going to switch into the north. But you cannot switch the north without changing direction, correct? You have to change direction. So is it changing direction is a pagan thing? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. Because simply I'm following the right direction. So, you know, the, the, the baptism 
is you announcing yourself in front of the Lord that I am here to change the direction of my life, accepting you in my life, welcoming you in my life, and you ask the Lord to accept you too. So it's a change of direction, it's a change of belief, it's a change of a stand of life, of a vision, how you see life, how you see people around you, how you look at God. That is a new life with the baptism. But it's not the baptism who is like a magical thing. We don't believe in magical water. If you touch it, you became a different person. We believe that God changed people, yes. God changed the heart of people, yes. But before you, before God can change you, I don't want to use the word can, before God change you, you should ask God to change you. So baptism simply, you are giving yourself to the Lord, says, Lord, help me for the direction of a change. I'm here, guide me. Otherwise, it's not it's not something I have to do with anything as you, as you imagine it is. Okay, and uh, I think uh, this is one, one final question, but it, I think it will really help me a lot. Uh, is there any like uh, for for me like uh, the 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 concept of him rising from the, after three days after uh, after crucifixion and people saw it? This is an important historical event that happened. But is there any proof, any other sources that this happened other than the Bible? Like uh, because the Bible is reporting it. Is there any other source that other people that saw it? Uh, happening you so that it's more evidence that uh, it's uh, more than one source well you know, the Bible says that there's hundreds and, and, and of people they, they saw Jesus and even thousands so uh, to go back 2,000 years ago maybe you can ask me to to show you Jesus himself you know that is uh, this, that's something I cannot do I cannot bring you people who uh, they were witnessing Jesus to mm -hmm. witness if they saw this or not uh, however you know uh, for me as a Christian, me myself, I wasn't in, next to the cross. I wasn't there when Jesus was out of the tomb. And I wasn't there when Jesus was talking, you know. But there is something very important. Uh, let us say for the sake of argument, Jesus was not crucified. <clears throat> let us say he was not, you know. And let us say Jesus was like some they want to say he's a prophet, like Islam says he's a prophet, right? And uh, some say, some yes. say, some say, everybody can give you different opinion. Like there's people who they are Jehovah's Witnesses, they say that Jesus is an angel. If there's any proof of that? No. Muhammad is saying that Jesus was not crucified. And there's any proof of that? No. Muhammad wasn't there. Muhammad is a person who came 600 years after Jesus. So for me to come 2,000 years after Jesus and to tell you, I was there and this is what happened, I will be fooling myself and fooling you. But why people who sacrifice their life? You see, the, the, the Christian uh, uh, the disciples of Christ, they were not Mujahideen to go and kill and get women and booty. Those people were losing, which means they are losing their life, they are losing their money, they are humiliated, they've been imprisoned, they've been fed to the, to the animals. Still, they believe that Jesus was resurrected. You know what I mean? I mean, why somebody want to do that? I put you in the front of a lion mm -hmm. and I say, deny Jesus, I will let you go. You say, no, give me to the lion. So if they are not witnesses and believers, they will not do what they are doing. You know what I mean? How many Christians today are willing to be fitted to the, to the, to the beast to the lions and the still with it will be Christians. Even the Quran speak about the people of the Akhdud, where supposedly a Jewish king, he put a fire, he made like a big hole in the ground. And he brought the Christians and he said to them, deny Jesus. Deny what? Deny Jesus. Deny your faith. The Christians, they decide to go for fire and not to deny Jesus. Why do they want to do that? 
and this is in chapter 85 and you can read from verse number 4 and 5 the Quran was copying a story and this is part of a true story about what happened to the Christian when discriminated by a Jewish king supposedly I wasn't there and this king he said bring all the Christians either they leave they believe or we burn them all and the Quran report the story that they were born burned and yet they did not deny their belief the question will be why anyone want to do that if especially when we speak about the disciples the disciples who were with Jesus why they want to say we saw Jesus and then they are willing to die for it not killing people not going to war which means they are getting, getting killed for no crime they did not fight anyone why do they want to do that do you have an explanation what do you think yeah uh like uh, there is no motive but, uh, there but uh, it makes sense i, I know but uh mm -hmm. yeah right you know I, a, a, a person you see especially we are talking about people who were with, with jesus not somebody believe later you know what i mean like i am a person who believe in jesus later maybe i'm willing to die for yes, the sake because, of jesus mm -hmm. but those are people who were there so they knew what happened exactly correct so they saw if jesus did miracle or not they saw if Jesus walked in water or not. They saw if Jesus made the dead come to life. They saw if Jesus made the blind see or not. They saw that Jesus, he was on the cross or not. So, and then they saw that Jesus come from the tomb or not. So why they want to fight? They will not fight for their life and live, but they are as if they are asking you to kill them and not to leave. Believing in a lie. Let us say for the sake of argument, all what Jesus did was a lie. Why those people want to die for the sake of a lie? And they are smart people, like not, not, they are not like a bunch of a crazy people. Why do they want to do that? Yeah, makes sense. And and if if. Uh... If if I would like to start in reading, uh, let's say the Bible, w which one would I start? And this is another common uh, argument. Like uh, they would say, there is only one Quran, and there is uh, I don't know how many Bibles, and and uh, so so that's why it's also confusing. How many books am I reading to to find the Word of God? No, this is and, not, this, uh, this so is, I want this is, your opinion on this. Like uh, yeah, this is a false statement, Muhammad, and they come with. We have one Bible. We don't have many and we have different translation it is the muslim who don't have quran at all actually you don't have a quran which quran you are reading you said to me you have one quran which quran the quran of uh Hafs or warsh yeah you it's mostly Hafs. Yeah, yeah okay but you have many quran and at the same time you have uh, yeah, th thousands mm -hmm. of translation each one of them is different they change everything. So when the Muslim they say to you, okay, which version of the Bible are you reading? King James? Well, this is not just a translation. This is the name of the translation. The king he ordered to translate. They call it King James translation. But it's not a new Bible. So they fabricate. So statement. it's like uh, Ali Yusuf or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, it's a translation because we are translating from the the where well, Jesus is, you know the Bible written in three languages, major three languages, Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek. So any any book after that. You know, and there's the Coptic language. This is from the oldest, you know, and there is uh, some manuscript like in Persian, some manuscript in the, uh, in the Indian language, like depending on how old the disciple, how long they went there and how much we have a manuscript. But the major manuscript we have is either Aramaic or Hebrew or Greek. So the rest is a translation. So when they say to you, which version of the Bible, this is not a new book, this translation. And if a translator was let us say, a good translator, then we accept him. The churches, they need to accept him. Not every translation is accepted. You know what I mean? There's a, there's a translation accepted, and there's translation. I, I can make a translation mm -hmm. right now. You can make a translation yourself. 
you know. A Muslim, he can make a translation of the Bible if he want. Who's going to stop him? And he can add things, he can take things, but this is in the translation. That is not the book. Right? So, if you want to read the Bible, choose anyone. We have the four guys. Oh, okay. Can I ask which... which... Yes, uh, this is my, my question. Like, uh, which matter. one would, would you it doesn't matter. Like, advise? I have zero knowledge on this. You see, all books are good for God is there, but not like the Quran. We don't believe in the Quran. What the Quran says, if Allah, uh, uh, Allah, he calls uh, uh, you to forget Quran so he can give you something better or similar. We don't believe in this, like chapter 2, verse 106. So when the Quran says, None of our revelation we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we bring better or similar. We don't have better book than other book. All the four Bibles is the book of God and they are, no one is better than the other one. However, each one of them, he give you mm -hmm. a new, you see, you heard of something called the three dimension, three dimension, right? Like there's a picture from the front, there's a picture from the right, there's a picture yeah, from the left. Okay. The Bible gives you four dimensions, which means full, perfect dimension of the story. You have four reporters, and each one of them, he is not copying the other one, because if they are copying, there's no need for this, the, the, this book, you know what I mean? If they are exactly word by word, then there is no need to write a new book. We'll just copy the first one. So it's a four dimension of Jesus' story, which is giving you better explanation and what happened by four people so it is better to have four not only one because each writer he concentrate in something as an example you know if i now uh if i put a picture for you and let us say you are a teacher and you have 50 students in the school 50 not five like in america and then you say to each one of them describe the picture for me you will see every student describe the same picture differently correct there is someone he noticed something, the other one did not notice it. There is someone he sees something, the others did not see it. There is someone who is so good in details, there is someone who is so good in philosophy, or let us say he uh, uh, is giving you more spiritual input. So the four writers, they are giving you more input, and that will give you full picture of the story. And a Muslim, he might, you know, try to, to fight the Bible. He might say to you, okay. Uh, like, okay, there's a contradiction. A story says that only when women she saw Jesus. No, it says we. So, you know, if somebody trying to find, to find like uh, what he call it an error, well, you know, we can solve it easy and we can give you the answer for it. It's very easy. However, for me, it's, uh, I'm so glad that we have four Gospels and the four is approved by all the Christians, which is a miracle, you know, because when you have a, a belief and this belief became so huge, you know, and then you make a believers agree in four books. That is a mission impossible. The Muslims, they have the Quran, but the Quran is not Islam. As you know that you have to believe in the Hadith and the Quran. And then, if Islam is not based on the Quran only, because most of the rules of Islam is in the Hadith, and the Muslims don't agree about the Hadith, that means Islam does not exist. You will not find one Christian saying, I don't believe in the book of John, or the book of Mark, or the book of Luke, or Matthew. But you will find Muslims denying even the Quran. So, when Muslims say we have one book, I laugh because they don't even have that book. Even this one, the most famous one, Hafs. I don't know, I think you speak Arabic, do you? Because you have an accent. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, as long as you speak Arabic, if you open the Arabic Quran, it says that this Quran is according to Riwaya to uh, Hafs, Riwaya to Abi, As, Abi, Abi, Abi Asim, Riwaya, 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 according to, according to, according to, according to, according to, exactly, according to, according to, according to, according to, according to Uthman, according to the Prophet Muhammad, okay. But it says Riwaya, you know what Riwaya mean, right? What Riwaya mean? 
in a story, like story uh, narration. To tell, yeah, okay. So it was narration. It was not really a book. So now we are not even taken from Muhammad. We are taken from somebody exists 200 years after Muhammad. And here you see the hypocrisy of this religion. They say to you that the book of John, as an example, written between like 45 to 60 years after Jesus. So 45 to 60 years, this is what they say, or they say the oldest manuscript, is, is bad, but somebody, he came 600 years, he never met Jesus, he can't talk about Jesus. And then his book itself is written according to, according to, according to, according to, according to, according to Hafs. And Hafs was exist 200 years after Muhammad. In the top of that, do you know what Hafs? Do you know? Do you know what the Muslims say about Hafs? You know that he's a liar. No, a liar. I don't know, like much, but uh, yeah, yeah, like uh, yeah. you can search unreliable, right. basically. You can search right now, which doesn't make sense. But, yeah. but we, we we never learned this beginning. Mm -hmm. I know, but you can search in Google. Hafs can a kadab. Hafs was a liar, and he even he steal books, and even his father is liar more liar than him. This is the most ob opinion of the Islamic scars of him. This is why if you go in Sahih al-Bukhari, you will not find as a hadith coming from Hafs. <laughs> so you take Quran from him, but you don't take his hadith? Why you don't take the hadith? Because of the book. Mm -hmm. You know? So how you accept him, accept him to be a reporter for the Quran when he is a liar? Right? And anyway, for me, I don't care really if he's a liar or not. The Quran for me in front of me. I, I never knew about the hadith first. I, I I will check the hadith part. I, I never knew that it was only the Quran, like they, they quoted him. But uh, it, it's uh, it's another good point that I, well, I will they, definitely check. They say, you know, he fabricate hadith. And he's, I, a, I think I, he's a liar, you know. And now for sure you will find some Muslim. They say to you, no, this is not true, right? Yeah. But, uh, but and, the, the uh, I think this would be uh, like my, my final question. I, uh, uh, was there any, any let's say in, in the Bible, any reference of any future prophet? This is another uh, argument that uh, it is mentioned that there will become a, a, another prophet in the future uh, to guide the people. And uh, I wanted to know if there is expected from uh, Christianity of another prophet, or did they mean okay. Jesus is coming back? Uh, you see, you see. Because uh, this is a critical point. Uh, I can right now prophesy about Jesus, but doesn't mean I am a prophet. I can prophesy to you that Jesus is coming soon, and then Jesus comes soon. But doesn't mean really I'm a prophet. I'm prophesying, you know, speaking about his coming. And either it's come to be true, or it's come to be false. So we do not need the prophets anymore to know Jesus. For Jesus himself, he came to us. The prophets who came after Jesus, let's say the disciples, they prophesy about Jesus. They prophesy about his coming. And some of them, they receive revelation. Those are prophets. But if God, he, you know, he, uh, he, he finds that it's for the benefit of mankind to send a prophet, he will. But for me, I don't see any reason for me to have more prophets because we've been taught everything about Jesus. And you know, the, the Bible speaks about conditions for somebody to claim to be a prophet. First, he had to prophesy in the same, in the name of the same God. Secondly, his prophecies have to come to be true. All of them, not one yes, one no. If he make a prophecy, one prophecy and it's false, he's a false prophet. Even if he made the prophecies, he made 10 prophecies, Nine of them come to be true. One of them can be to be false. He's a false prophet. But for me, why I need a prophet anyway? I mean, I have the Messiah. And, and the disciples, they completed the mission. We have his life. We have his story. And the Lord, he says, whoever believe in me and I will live. But it says it's completed. Exactly. It's completed as the mission of Jesus to come. And uh, to this see. is my question. Yeah, when uh -huh. Jesus in the cross, he said it's complete. And this was a prophecy. We're talking about prophecies in the book of Psalm, speaking about a prophecy about Jesus, where it says, uh, 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 Eli, Eli, lema shabaktani. 
which is a prophecy about Jesus. So Jesus says is completed all the prophecies about me, including that I will be crucified. It's completed, you know. And this is the, the first, let us say, the first step of Jesus on earth, because the second step, which is after the resurrection. And then Jesus, he come and he appeared to the disciples. And even the disciples, you know, they did not believe it is, it's, it's possible, you know, to the point one of the disciples, he asked him to show his hands, you know, like, is that you? You know, because he had nails still, this, the sign of the nails, the person who was crucified, is that you? You know, so it's not easy to believe that somebody, he was crucified in front of us, and then we take him to a grave or a tomb, and then three days after he come to back to, to us walking alive, the disciple they witness that and they question and they check his hand to see if it's him. And then not only he have the same look, the same person, the same voice, who they live with him, they spend long time with him. He did miracles the same as he did before. Nothing changed. The same Messiah who was powerful before is the same Messiah who is power, powerful after. Like now, if somebody came to me and he say, I am the Messiah, how I would know he's not, or he is. I mean, anyone can claim to be, I am the Messiah. The Messiah, he came once as a, as a man, he will come to again as a man. So, how I know it's not him? Very simple. The Messiah himself, he gave me the, the guideline. He will come with the glory of his father. So he will come with the glory nobody have ever. And his angels will be strong in him. So we will see something we never saw before. Nothing to do with normal men. In the same time, the Messiah, he do what Messiah do. His high in quality. His ethic is beyond imagination. His power is amazing. And then the coming of the Messiah is going to be very unique because he will be the judge in the judgment day. So he will come as a judge which means he will come with the power we did not see before. Before Jesus coming humbly as a man, you can insult him, you can shout at him, you can say whatever you want, but the coming Messiah will come as a king of kings, and he is going to judge all mankind. And this is how we recognize him. And even if I was in the time of the, uh, uh, in the, time of the Messiah, you will notice, like as an example, the story of the blind man. The blind man, when he, when Jesus was walking by, he did not say to him, "Give me food." I mean, he's a blind man. What do you expect from a blind man in the in the in the floor in the street? He did not say to him, uh, "Please help me. I need shelter." He said to him, "I want to see." Did you, did you ask yourself why in the world somebody is in the street? He said, and he's a blind, he's born blind. I want to see. Why he want to do that? You know, is that normal to happen? Why I want to say, I want to see. I should ask for something else. This is the last thing is expected from a blind man to say. Because this is nobody can do. I mean, what, what do you mean I want to see? This is not even acceptable as a request. It's a crazy request. So when the Messiah was walking, uh, and then the disciple, they said to him, uh, Lord, did this person who is a blind, did he did sin or his parents did sin? The Messiah, he said, he did not born as because of sin, his sin or the sin of his parents. But to show the glory of the Lord by recovering him. And then the Messiah, he healed the person and he made him see. So even the stories which is reporting for us about the Messiah is happening today in this world. There's many people are healed and nobody can explain how they are healed. There's people who they, um, you know, like they experience a miracle, even even atheists who they are doctors, atheists. When there is something happened to a, to, to a, a patient, and this thing cannot be explained, 
they themselves they use the word miracle it's a miracle but he's an atheist why he say the word miracle because he cannot explain logically how that happened and this word miracle is used every day by atheist believers non-believers doesn't matter what is your belief it's a miracle why we use the word miracle for there is always something we can't explain how it happened it is above the nature it is above normal and it is not usual and for sure in the top of that you can't explain <clears throat> anything else well uh... I think I have a, a like uh, yeah, I don't know what to say. Like I, you really mentioned a lot of nice uh, points, and uh, I will definitely uh, I, I'm researching this very heavily, and I decided to call you because I needed the the push basically. Like uh, I feel something is uh, stopping me to learn more about this, and uh, I cannot make decision, of course, uh, right now, but. Uh, I, I think I, I will like have to research more, and I will let you know. Like, I will let you know if, uh, well, if you something know, changes. Well, I, uh, well, hopefully, well, hopefully, as soon as possible. Yeah, well, my friend, it's it's up to you. As I said, I don't want to push you to do anything in Christianity. We believe that faith is something very personal, and it has to be coming from your heart. Uh, I'm not going to promise you heaven if you say it right now, but I say that Lord, the Lord Himself, He said. Whoever believe in me and die will live. That is the promise of the Messiah. So you are an adult, mature, smart, and you know where is your salvation will be. So if you feel like you want to accept the Messiah right now, feel free. If you feel you are not ready, don't, you know. But I say that I might go to sleep and I might not wake up tomorrow. Who knows? Correct? Who knows? I don't know. I might die a second from now. Who knows? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, for me, uh, my faith is giving me uh, comfort, security, confidence, and make me a different person. Like me, like now, why am I even sitting with you? I'm here speaking for the last, what, uh, three hours? Or, or two hours and a half. If I don't believe in, in the Messiah, I will be like going somewhere, drinking coffee or watching TV or doing something. I mean, there's many, many more fun things to do than talking to somebody with my respect to you. I do not know, right? I mean, why, why I want to even be talking to you now? Uh, yes, same as the, what you said. Yeah, but because of the Messiah, my friend, I am here to serve you. Not to talk to you, not only to talk to you. The Messiah, he says, if you want to be a master, you have to be a servant. I'm not seeking to be a master, but I'm seeking to be a servant. And he washed the feet of his disciples. Washing the feet, that is my Lord, my friend. So with the Messiah, you are a new person. Imagine someone walk in water, someone can make the blind see. Imagine you have such a power. Imagine if you now, people learn about you that you can heal cancer. You will find tens of thousands in front of your, your house willing to die for you because you can bring them back from death. Jesus did not use his power for his own glory. He used it just to heal us and to show us the truth. He was humbly walking between people. He is not asking for money. He never asked for return. Imagine how many kings will pay Jesus to keep them alive. You die, you come back. You die, you come back. You know, that's, that's amazing. All kings, they love that. And all of us, we love to live, not to die. But with the Messiah, you are a new person, for you follow him. He was an example of no example, which means nobody really can be like him. Who of us is willing to go and wash the feet of people who follow him? Nobody. Nobody. I mean, and who is forcing him to do that? Why in the world somebody his followers believe that he's God. And he said to them, I want to wash your feet. And when they refuse, he said, if you don't let me do it, you don't belong to me. I do not know you. 
the Messiah, he knew the future. He knew that some they will be proud. They will, he knew that some they will be bishops and patriarch or pope, and they will be proud about themselves, and they will make themselves kings, and they will use the name of Jesus to control the crowd. Jesus told them, be careful from those. The one who don't wash your feet, he don't present me. Which means the one who is not a servant. So in Christianity, a bishop is a servant, is not a master. The Pope is a servant if he want to be a Pope, otherwise he is no Pope. A priest, he is a servant, not a leader. So the Messiah, he changed the point of view of leadership. The leader is the one who serves, not the leader who is going to be served. That is the Messiah. And if anyone really, he practiced what the Messiah did, that, that will make you a very much beloved leader. because. Because you are a servant, people, they choose you to be a leader. Not because you are a leader, they want to become your servant. Because with the Messiah, when you are a servant, you are a leader by love. People love how much wonderful you are. It is your wonderful act and work and behavior made them take you as a leader not the opposite. So the Messiah, my friend, he flipped your life upside down. From everything we believe before, everything we think before, that a king we bow down to a king, that he was a ruler, so, you know, and the poor, he, he called the rich uh, sir, and the rich, he, you know, abused. The Messiah, he said, if you want to belong to me, then you don't belong to the word of the rich. Doesn't mean you don't be rich. No, you can be rich. But a rich person, he is rich first with his act. A rich person, he give, he help, he don't worship himself and keeping more and more and more money until he is so faithful rich. Nobody will take with him anything to the grave. So you be servant first, and then you belong to the Messiah. Otherwise, you don't know him. You never know him. So this is why, you know, when they ask the Messiah how to pray, because, okay, how we pray, you know, what, what we say to the Lord when we pray. The Messiah, he said to them, when you pray, pray like this, but don't necessarily pray this. Pray like this. And he called, you know, he called for them, our Father out of heaven. And then in the prayer, the Messiah, he said to them, you say, forgive us as we forgive to others. Here you learn more about the Messiah. Forgive to us as we trespass against others, the same as we forgive to others. So the Messiah taught us from the beginning, if you want to be forgiven, you need to learn how to forgive. And here you notice that every, every sentence we are quoting from the Messiah is a new life. That's why when you ask me about baptism, baptism presents a new life because you accept all of this. It's not just the water. The water is like, let's say, let's say this is the, you are now ready for the new trip. Now you are ready. So forgive us for our sin as we forgive to others, which means Jesus, he made it clear you want to belong to me, you forgive. You love, you love people. They did harm to you, forgive them. Don't be hateful. And this is again, take us to the beginning. For God, he loved the world. He sent his only begotten son. For he loved the world. So if you cannot love, and you have hate in your heart, like the Islam teach you, kuffar, infidels, Allahu Akbar, conspiracy, everybody wanna kill us. We need to kill everybody. They insulted the prophet, they made a cartoon. You know, you don't see uh, such a thing. If, if, if a Christian wanna go and kill somebody because he insulted Jesus, well, he, he do not know what Jesus mean. If Jesus himself, he forgave those who they insulted him when he was on the cross. He said, forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. He himself, he forgive, who are you not to forgive? So with the Messiah, my friend, you are a new person. And this is why I'm saying to you, 
it is an opportunity to accept the Messiah now, not tomorrow. I'm not pushing you to say yes. I'm saying to you, it's an opportunity because I believe that the Messiah is an opportunity of salvation. We might not have soon because nobody can grant me or grant you to live until tomorrow or even an hour from now. Nobody. And then sorrow will not help. And so yeah, so it, it will makes sense. Work. Like uh, everything makes sense. And one of the things that made me uh, curious about this is his personality. It's it's very it's completely unique than any any other character I've ever read about. And that's that's that alone is a reason why I, I became interested in this. But at the same time. You, you, when I think about it, it, it's problematic for me because I cannot. When I think about him, I only think about a human, and, and I can, and, and it feels weird that I am worshiping human because he came in human form. That's why I, I cannot shake this uh, feeling, because I, I, the moment I imagine him or think about him, I'm thinking about human. Hmm. So that, that's see, why I don't know to think father or think human. No or, problem. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm this glad in Islam is, is making more sense at least. No, actually, I'm glad you are mentioning this. Islam makes no sense in all because Allah is a human too. Is it Allah? He looked the same as the Messiah, as Muhammad said. He looked like the same Messiah when Muhammad he says Allah is not uh, one eye. Uh, uh, you know, he was talking about the Messiah, the Dajjal, the false Messiah. So a man he will come as the Messiah, and then. Uh, 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 he, uh, uh, Muhammad warning them that this is not Allah because Allah is not one-eyed. So the Muslim they have a wrong idea about who is Allah, and because they are Muhammad, Muhammad himself is very confused and he deceived them very much. So you do not know what are you talking about. But obviously Allah is a man. He have a leg, he have a shin, and he look as the false Messiah exactly, except that the false Messiah he have a problem with one eye. Same time, my friend. Let us say. Uh, Okay, the Messiah, he came as a man. What is the problem with that? What is the problem? You are saying I'm worshipping a human. No, I don't have problem. Uh, actually, I actually don't have problem with this. Uh, this is one of the points that I am not having issue with because uh, I, I can understand that uh, if he chooses to come in this form, then then it's it's up to him exactly uh, which is which is another point that i don't agree that uh, that uh, he cannot not come uh, uh, and choose not to come they would say it doesn't fit him it doesn't befit him but he, if he still has no option to come this means it's his limited power uh, which which i which is uh, uh, which I don't agree with, so I don't have an issue with this. I, I own, and it's just uh, my personal uh, experience. Let's say uh, all you think is man, uh, like a uh, human, basically. It's just maybe it's uh, just uh, my friend, a, a rational are, thought. We, I don't know. we are a human, right? We are a human. So if God want to come to us, He should come as what? I would be terrified if I see Him in different form. What He will come as what? You know? So, uh, when the Messiah he come as a human because simply he's coming to us. He's not coming to a giraffe or bear or or a lion. He is coming to the human. And he proved to us that you being a human is not an excuse not to be me. You see, Jesus he told us to be holy like your father. Be holy like your father. Okay, how you can be holy like your father? I am a human. I cannot be holy like my father. So Jesus said, when he said, be holy like your father, he showed us that how you can be holy like the father. Here we go. I'm a human. The excuse, which is you always repeat, I'm a human, I'm a human, I'm a human. I overcome the human part. And I can, if you follow me, I can lead you to be holy like your father, but you have to follow me. So with Jesus as a human, he brings us back to our humanity. We, we know we lost our humanity a long time ago. A human, a human today is a beast. He's a rapist. He's a criminal. He's a child molester. He is, he's, he's everything evil. For me, I, I, don't, I don't fear to have a 10 dogs around me, but I fear to be with some strangers. I do not know who they are because I don't know what they will do. You know what I mean? 
if you are in the middle of nowhere and you see 10 people coming to you you have no idea what will happen you will be in fear because it just depends how good how bad they are but if i know dogs do i know what dogs want you give them a bone they, they will leave you alone but a human being what do you want he's more evil than any evil so with the messiah my friend the messiah he bring us to our godly human nature which means to be human who follow god not to be human the beast so the messiah the human is a perfect way for me to understand god how much god can explain himself more than being a human you know what i mean always always atheists they say to you okay sure, sure okay, you believe in god let us see god let us see god where's your god Will Jesus come to you as a human? You, you saw him. So the Bible says, for you know, God, he humbled himself. He humbled himself in order to know him. It was not because he want to show off. God, he do not need to show off. He's God. That would be funny and silly. That someone, in, you know, he's God, he's the creator, he's super almighty. And then he want to show us what he can do. All the miracles of Jesus is not to show us what he can do, but to show us that he is the one which we are waiting for, which means is a signature of his act. It's a normal thing for him to do. It's a miracle for us. And this is how Jesus he presented himself as God to us. I am the man yet, yes, but look, I can walk in water. I can forgive sin. When he said, which one is easier to say to him, carry your chair or your sin is forgiven? Which one is easier? What do you think, my friend? To say to somebody your sin is forgiven or to tell him a person he can't walk stand up and walk which one do you think is harder mm -hmm. for sure you know your sin is forgiven yeah, is easy the, you know? yeah. so so jesus said to him which one those those jews they were wondering like well, who is this person who did he, he think is god he's forgiving sin and even he re, he did read his, their thought so he said to them which one is easier to say your sin is forgiven or carry your chair and walk. So Jesus can be a person who claimed to be God and he say, your sin is forgiven. But he confirm who is he by saying to the man, carry your chair and walk. You know what I mean? Otherwise talk is cheap. Muhammad, he claimed to be a prophet, but there's no miracles. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Like <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I will definitely think about it before I before I go to sleep tonight. Then. All right, my friend. But well, uh, I'm happy for you. I hope. But what do you think? What about you decide? I, I, you I decide? just want. I want to think. I think. But did you decide to leave Islam yet or not yet? Did I decide to leave Islam? I, I think it would be. Huh. I didn't hear you. Sorry again. Well, like uh, you want to hear the, the yes part, but uh, I'm almost there. With, with, with all your help, I'm almost there. All right. Well, almost there. It's, it's just the courage part, not, not the convincing part. So I can say you left Islam, but you don't want to say in public. It's all right. Maybe they are not ready to say it in public yet. Anyway, my friend, I'm happy for you. I'm so glad that you spoke to me. And here we go. You're in Pat Talk. You can to contact me anytime soon. And, and thank you. Too. And if you want to announce yourself to accept the Messiah, I, I, I will be happy. I will. All right. Okay, my friend. God bless you. And we ask the Christians, all of them, to pray thank to you. our friend. And may the Lord open your eyes and your heart, your heart, and you know, bring you to Him. And then you will become a child of God. And then you will have the glory of His kingdom.
because you will be a child you see this is what I want to say to you one more thing before you go in Christianity you are a child of God in Islam you are a slave of Allah the Quran says I did not create a human being and jinn and genie except to worship me in Christianity God he created you to be his child there's a huge difference in the way we God look at us in both believe in Islam you are just a slave and you have it one duty is to worship him in Christianity our God he do not need worshipers he is self-confident he do not need people bending down and begging for mercy this is not what he made you for because if this is what he made you for that means this God is sick he is lonely and he need attention literally he need attention our God he is doing the opposite he is giving us the attention he is not seeking our attention he's saying hey I want to save you I love you I send you my son to save you because I love you so he do not need your attention for he is a true God the God of Islam he need attention he need worshippers actually even Muhammad he said if you don't want if, if, if you do not commit sin if you don't commit sin Allah he will whip you out of the earth and he will create people who and commit sin people. you remember the hate right you remember it right yes yeah so if you don't commit sin Allah yes, will erase yes. you like, uh, if you don't sin yeah so if you don't commit sin Allah will erase you what kind of God this God is in Christianity you no know. God he sent you his son so you don't commit sin to help you to save you he is not bored I mean what kind of God he says if you don't commit sin I will destroy you and bring somebody to replace you what kind of God he do that and what is the logic this is this is telling you the nature of the God of Islam is far from because it's opposite to what he's wanting yeah yeah he, this is this is his need then it's you know, a conflict, a conflict of all. yeah this is the need of Allah Allah he need people who beg for forgiveness he seek attention he need attention he's desperate and this is totally in contradiction with the story uh, uh, in the Old Testament like about God that he destroyed the people of Noah because they are became extreme in sin so how you say to me if you don't commit sin huh? the, the, the logic of the Muslim they will say or the, uh, the, the Muhammad that because you did not ask for forgiveness so Allah he needed sinners begging for forgiveness in order for him to feel good this is how we feel good and this is cannot be from God with Jesus is the opposite and there's no way that true God will do such a thing this is an unaccepted statement an unaccepted behavior from someone he claimed to be God anyway my friend I'm happy for you and I believe all you know you are already left Islam but it's okay I will hear it from you next time you call me and I hope soon you will accept the Messiah of course as yes. your Lord as and your savior I'm, I'm already feeling like uh, better already well but, if, but, if uh, you, thank you if you, 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 you want to if you want to announce that you left this time go uh, ahead i would like i would love to hear it <laughs> if you want to announce i i i, I, will, I know you don't want to hear this but uh, right. it's just a personal thing like all right. All right. i will definitely say for for the all other right. one all right my friend thank you very much and, and, and uh, so i want to thank you again Everyone. Take, take care. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good night. Bye bye. All right. Well, I can tell he is out of his time already, but you don't want to say it's okay. Uh, I wanted to hear it from him, to be honest with you. I mean, it make me happy. It it make my day way better. But. Uh, you know, here we go. I receive a message from somebody saying I accept the Messiah. Please don't share my screen. Okay, no problem. We don't want us to share anything about him or her. I don't know. 
it's a Muslim decide to leave Islam so you do not say it somebody else say it <laughs> and you know this is the beautiful thing about what we do here you don't know who's listening there's some people they have the courage to say and some people they have the courage to speak in public their voice will be heard there's people don't like they are private people you know they are it's not about being brave or not but some people they are very private they don't like to speak in present of a thousand people or more you know and it's not easy right so I'm happy to our friend and happy to the message I received from the person who accepted the Messiah and saying he want to speak or she want to speak to me in private uh, but I say clearly that the message of Muhammad is a message of a self-esteem person he worship himself he wanted to be the center of the universe. So he come with God, and this God, he do nothing except for Muhammad. To the point he said, all what I Allah he created was for me, for my sake. The universe, even Allah's chair, does not exist because Allah, he needed a chair, but he wanna, He made it to so he can write my name on it. The throne of Allah is because of Muhammad. The tablet of Allah is because of Muhammad. The universe, the earth, and the heaven, the stars, we, you, the cre all the creation is for the sake of Muhammad. So Muhammad obviously is mentally ill person. While Jesus, he come to us, and yet he is the Lord. He was denying himself, humbling himself, washing the feet of his disciples. Muhammad was praising himself and he changed his name from Qatham to the praised one. The name alone is a curse. Because if I call myself the praised one, who is the praised to? I thought Muslims are not mushrikeen and they don't believe in gods. But the name of Muhammad is a name of a god. For only God is the praised one. I believe strongly that Muhammad is a fraud copy of a person who was exist a long time ago his name they call him prophet Manny prophet Manny this man is a false prophet is not a prophet and you will notice that Muhammad he copy a lot of things from this guy this person he wanted to be the Messiah in this earth And by the way, until now he have followers. It's called the Manawiya. Mani. Muhammad is a copy of Mani. And actually, sometimes I feel like it's just a new name of Mani. Or let us say the Arabic version of Mani. The versions, the you know, tons of things. And maybe we should go in deep study one day about it. Uh, but because this is like need some let us say professional level of education. Uh, usually we try to focus in the basic and uh, not to go too much deep in the history. All right. Manatheism, so yeah, you're right, close. See, there's Anton now, by the way, he have followers. I think in America they have a, they have like a timber for him, you know, his followers. I remember once in the, in, in Google search, uh, you know, I found uh, um, like a website, they have a building, they have etc. But they are small numbers uh, of people who follow him. But this guy, he became very major person in certain time, you know. It's not like a, you know, like, a, but because he did not, you know, Islam came and Islam oppressed all those religions who was exist in that area. Sabians, the many, the many, uh, and even the Christians, you know, but because the Christianity spread uh, and let us say it was different level, Islam could not delete it. 
even Muhammad he says I am the eraser he came to erase Judaism to erase Christianity but that will never happen we are here to erase Islam and the cult of Islam and the garbage of Muhammad and as you see the more people listen to us the more people will leave and the number who leave way more than those who say we left because many they are afraid of this garbage cult it's a gang system this person who spoke to me now he had many things to worry about besides leaving a religion because we know what Islam is about it's a gang system so we are erasing Islam every day and we are saving Muslims from the cult of Muhammad we don't hate Muslims we will never hate them for we are first follower of Christ and the Messiah he said for God he loved the world he sent his only begotten son so for he loved the world not for he hate the world and Muslims my friend are part of this world so God he loved them but remember love is an opportunity to accept love cannot be from one side if you don't love the Messiah from your heart and you believe in him your love is fake because you want to be loved but you don't love the one who loves you so the Messiah inviting the Muslims to be saved and he asked us to love them for he loved them too but if they don't want then don't cry for the day of judgment when the Messiah will say to you you follow a child molester you follow the criminal a gang a pirate a thief a person who used to stand in the roads in the highway robbing people taking their clothing a prophet who made a story about robbing a sandals a prophet who claimed that God created 60 donkeys and the donkey he got is from a Jewish he killed him and this was the last donkey of the prophets and his name is Yafur God my friend will ask you questions in the day of judgment for all the faith the wrong faith you have because you made God as a pimp not only you follow the wrong God you accept the idea that God is a pimp who is going to provide you virgins and boys slavery in heaven sex slaves in heaven God became a vendor of sexual entertainment how you can accept such a God it's an insult to God to be such a God for God is holy God is not a pimp and if God wants to make us happy he can make us happy without any sexual promises because remember even sexuality is created by God so can God who created that can give us better and higher level of happiness absolutely for he is almighty sexuality was given to us so we can have family so we can multiply so we can fill the earth with the children of Adam it was not the purpose it was not the target in Islam it became the target you pray to God to get sex you bow down to God to get sex you fight for the sake of God and kill others and what is the reward sex and not to forget to drink and food perfect casino that have no place with the Messiah a God who promised you women with big breast he is obviously mentally ill there's no need even to prove it imagine if I come to your door and I say to you hey believe in me I'm a prophet if you believe in me I will give you women with big boobs aren't you going to laugh at me be honest Muslims why you believe in such a garbage 
because you are born in it and you don't dare to question it and you don't dare to say this is going to be right but it's is it obvious it can't be right this is how god talk women they became boobs aren't they human like us women they became reward which means they became sex toys why they don't have a feeling they are not exist they are made just for you to play with they are designed for your sexuality this is how God he speak so think about it and be honest for a second someone come to your door and he knock at the door and say hey I'm a prophet my name is Muhammad if you believe in me I will give you endless penis and a vagina fit for that and women with big boobs that is Islam my friend you try to hide it you try to run away from it you try to say Islam uh, uh, you know uh, say it's give it charity all this garbage it's, this is garbage even your charity is a theft and we showed the verses when we were speaking of our Muslim friend only with the Messiah you are high and holy and when I say you are high and holy you are high in the ethic and you are in the way of holiness only with Muhammad you are from the west and down you are a person who think about nothing but breast and testicles and penises for that is Allah and that is Jesus thank you all for being here may the Lord bless you and I will see you soon again Christ is Lord Islam is false and don't forget to download the video because we don't keep them for long God bless you take care